there. I just wanted to give you guys a few tips for if your baby is in the NICU. Number one, ask questions, lots of them. In the NICU, there's so many things that are happening um, that you need to be aware of and the only way to find out is if you ask questions. I say that no question is too big or too small. Um, remember you're new to this and by the time that your baby comes home, you will be an expert, trust me. You will feel like a doctor <laughs> and a parent, all one and the same. Number two, here are a few common issues that occur in preemies and some full-term babies who need to spend some time in the NICU. They might endure um, what's called a PDA, they might have Brady's, apnea, trouble eating um, orally via breast or bottle, um, they might have trouble with their lungs and need uh, assistance, they might have pulmonary hypertension, NEC, brain bleeds, all of those sound super, super scary, um, but those are common things that happen. Um, not all babies will endure each of those issues. Um, and if your baby's on oxygen, a daily question to ask is, what's my baby's saturation level? That's so important to know whether they're uh, maintaining their oxygen uh, saturations, which are usually um, in the high 90s, uh, when they're at 100, um, that means that the blood, uh, I'm sorry, that the oxygen is flowing from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, and that's excellent. So when the baby is anywhere in the 90s range, and obviously meeting 100, that's awesome. Um, something to note that um, there's different types of oxygen support. There's, um, your baby can be intubated, which is when a tube is placed down their throat, and they're relying on an oscillator or a conventional ventilator. When they become um, to the point to where they're uh, able to be extubated, that means that the tube is taken out of their throat and they're placed on um, some form of uh, oxygen, low flow, um, high flow, or some type of CPAP. And that's actually a good thing because it shows that the baby is able to um, breathe you know, on their own with just a little bit of assistance and um, usually when a baby gets extubated, it shows that they're making great improvement and um, that their lungs are functioning better and um, that's awesome. So make sure that you ask, what's my baby saturation level? And just get an idea of um, what it's going to take to um, progress, you know, whether it's getting extubated, whether it's getting your baby off of CPAP and ultimately you know, ridding the baby completely of any type of oxygen support. So it's important just to be aware and kind of get familiar with um, the equipment that your baby is on and what it's going to take for them to progress off of it. Number four, the NICU can be a busy and a very noisy place. So I want to encourage you to create a peaceful atmosphere for your baby. Now your child might be in a big room with other babies, maybe you know, anywhere from three to four or eight to 10. Um, but in that, in your baby's area, I think that is so important to create a space of peace and positivity, um, whether you need to put up, you know, little pictures or little verses, Bible verses or words of affirmation on their incubator, um, play music for them. Um, some of the things that we did was we had, um, you know, positive words of affirmation on Jackson's incubator. Um, and we had just a peaceful sense whenever you walked in his room. Um, we were always, you know, trying to speak in low tones because too much stimulation um, can be a lot for your child um, when they're in the NICU. So for us, we had to keep our voices down. Um, anything that uh, was negative or you know if the doctor had some not so good news we asked to speak outside of our child's room um, because I just felt like it's so important to maintain that piece of um, that sense of peace within your child's room um, I would also say that um, you know try not to dwell on the negative things and remember that your baby is fighting for their life so they're doing the best that they can so if you you know bring that negative energy into your child's room i i truly believe that they can feel that so we want to keep it positive 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 always 
Number five, I suggest that you get to know the staff. Now, I'm not saying that you need to become best friends with the staff and you know go out to eat and exchange phone numbers and all of that, but I think that it's important just to exchange some form of camaraderie with the staff. You know, get to know um, who um, the charge nurse is of you know the day or the week, um, the nurse manager, the social worker, the um, case managers, um, the neonatologist, obviously, who uh, is looking after your baby, the respiratory therapist, um, even the receptionist. I think it's so important to greet these people when you see them in passing, um, because after all, they're taking care of your baby while you're not there and while you are there. So you want them to feel appreciated and you want just to, you know, just it's just a nice thing to do. Like I said, you don't have to become best buddies with them, but these people are in charge of your greatest, biggest blessing. And um, you just want to make sure that everything is, you know, good. There's a good vibe uh, between you and the staff. Um, yeah. Okay. So number six, uh, if you're unsure of anything, ask. I can't stress that enough. A lot of times, um, parents feel uh, a little intimidated maybe by the staff like let's say by the doctor because obviously they are a doctor um, but at the end of the day you're your child's advocate you're their voice their number one advocate so if the doctor is suggesting um, doing a procedure or giving medicine or putting the baby on you know a formula or whatever it is um, I think that it's important that you ask, especially if you don't know, okay, what is this for and why Why are you suggesting this? It's okay to ask. It really is okay to ask. I don't feel that um, it it's, uh, it's okay just to stand by and just say, okay, just because they're the doctor or they're the nurse. I think that um, you really have to know what's going into your child's body, what's coming out of your child's body, and what's happening, um, especially like finding out what's the plan of care. Like, okay, my child is, you know, advanced off of oxygen. Okay, so what's next? What are the necessary steps to us going home? Or, you know, my child didn't, you know, have a good day. What do we need to do to, you know, fix such and such problem? So I think that it's important just to ask questions and to really just be involved with their care. That is super duper important. Um, I'm not saying, I, I think it's important to note that I'm not saying like to act in a rebellious manner or to question everything that they're doing in a, in a derogatory way or demeaning way. Um, but I think that you should be aware of what's going on with your child. Um, some Sometimes parents just stand back and they feel a little, like I said, too intimidated to ask, but it's important to ask and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and I feel like as their advocate, um, that that's okay. So yes, don't challenge the doctor, uh, but ask questions and ex ask for explanations if you don't understand something and you know, keep it pushing. Okay. Um, and lastly, number seven, ignorance is not bliss in the NICU. It's not bliss. Like, you can't be ignorant to things in the NICU. You need to know um, what's going on. I'm the type of person who uh, wanted to know everything that's going on. Um, I kept it, stored it all in my brain. You know, my husband and I were tag team. Sometimes he would be at... Um, at rounds and sometimes I would be at rounds sometimes both of us would be there together you know as our son progressed throughout the NICU um, our schedules really started changing because both of us were back at work and juggling going to the NICU so um, you know I was not ignorant to what was going on um, I knew what was going on and um, I really think that sometimes as parents and just as people in general we um how do i say this sometimes we don't ask the necessary questions because we're afraid of the answer or sometimes we just say oh it's okay like i would just rather not know um but you can't just not know stuff especially when it comes to your baby so um you know i know that asking the hard questions um, it's hard um, you might be fearful you might be anxious about it but it's so important just to just to do it um, you know 
for example, there was times when I, I had to ask the hard questions like, do you think my baby is going to make it or not? Now, I wasn't necessarily prepared for the answer. Like, what if he said no? Or what if he, you know, I just asked the question because for me, I felt like that's something I needed to know. Um, and I feel like you have to do what's hard. Going through the NICU is tough, but in order to go through in order to get to the finish line you have to go through you have to go through something in order to get the win which is bringing your baby home that's that's the ultimate goal so if you keep that in the forefront of your mind of you know what this might be tough the days are long the nights are long i'm stressed i'm tired i'm feeling all of these things at the end of the day just get that tunnel vision of gosh but once we get through this i can bring my baby home and this will be behind me and we'll look back and say gosh we made it so far and my child is a miracle my child is amazing he's strong he's a fighter he's brave and we made it through the finish line we didn't make it to but we made it through so i want you to keep those tips in mind that i gave you and if you would like um, a more elaborated version of the tips that i gave you feel free to check out my website the uh, miraclewife.com where um, i give a lot more detail on each of the seven tips that i gave you so until next time stay blessed stay well and i'll talk to you next time thank you